welcome to Daventry Museum spark transmitter demonstration. This is an induction coil. <clears throat> they were invented in the middle of the 19th century and they, they were then developed in the 1890s to produce the newly discovered radio waves. Inside the red tube is a central iron core around which is wound um, several turns of very thick wire. Outside the tube, inside here, are at eight to ten miles of very fine wire. <coughs> and the, how it works is that a battery is connected to the inner thick wire and that produces a very high voltage on the outer wire and a spark is produced across this gap at the front and it was discovered as I say in the 1890s that a spark could produce radio waves and could be form, made into a form of communication. I'm now going to demonstrate the working of the coil. designed for sending messages by Morse code. You can't use speech or music. That didn't come in until the valve was invented around a World War I period. This equipment would have been used on the Titanic, so they would have sent the SOS message. <coughs> to form the complete transmitter, as well as the coil, you also need a Leiden jar, which is, the modern term would be capacitor, it's a, it's a device that stores electricity, and a coil of wire. To complete the installation, you would need a 50 metre mast outside to radiate the um, radio waves, and then here, in this case, it's represented by a piece of wire. This is a modern reproduction of the type of receiver that would have been used at the time. It also needs a 50 metre aerial and it would use the same aerial as the transmitter. And in the station there would be a switch so you could switch whether you wanted to send or receive a signal. The heart of the receiver is in this pen tube which would have been glass originally, which is filled with particles of iron, iron filings. And it was found in the 1880s that when a, a radio signal passed through the iron filings, they <coughs> joined together, tended to, to sort of fuse together with each other so that the uh, resistance altered and it rang the bell. And then you had to tap the device to reset the filings. And it was called a coherer because the, the filings were said to cohere together. Nobody knew why at the time. And um, the, so this is a coherer receiver that rings a bell. You would have uh, on your station the transmitter, the 50 meter aerial outside, the receiver. You would also have probably one or two other receivers. You would have um, a, what they call a Morse inker, which was a paper tape on which the Morse code was printed as it came in so you could then read the message from the tape. And they had a, a, this older type would have been called the call bell, because you'd leave this on, and then when a message started to come in, the bell would ring and alert you to the fact that you've got to listen to receive the message. I will now demonstrate the receiver I have to tap the iron filings in the coherer to reset so that they unstick themselves. 
they did a modification where the actual bell was made to reset the coherer so that it was self-resetting. So that it, it, each time a, a, um, a pulse came in, it would ring and then stop ringing and ready for the next one to come in. It was self-resetting coherer. So this all was a, a Victorian invention, a discovery, in the 1890s and was developed into the 1900s. If you would like to watch the virtual tour of the museum, there's some pictures of early transmitting stations where you can see the coil and receivers. The, this invention, of course, as the uh, 20th century went through, resulted in radio, TV, mobile phones, and all the sorts of radio communication that we enjoy and take for granted nowadays. If you have any questions about this video, or, or, or would like to see any other video demonstrations, please contact us at Daventry Museum. Thank you for watching Daventry Museum's Spark Transmitter video.